How great was this? The Twitter president is taken offline. An employee on his final day at work goes rogue and deactivates Donald Trump's account. Oh, what a... <laughs> yeah, brilliant. It was... It was his last day at work and he deleted Trump's Twitter. For 11 glorious minutes, Trump did not exist. <laughs> Trees were blooming, cats were hugging mice, people were getting out of wheelchairs like, oh, oh. <laughs> That man will never have to buy a drink again. The Evening Standard wanted to give him a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> the only way that could have been better is if they took over Trump's account and sent these tweets. At Barack Obama, hey, baby, let's go for a cup of <laughs> At Putin, they'll never catch us. DM me that pic of you and a horse. <laughs> and my personal favourite, at Kim Jong-un, has anyone ever told you you really look like the kid from Up? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> In fact, there was only one fight on Black Friday. It was at Oxford Circus, and it must have been a pretty big one because Ollie Murs was in a shop half a mile away and he got the fear big time. Fuck! Everyone get out! Selfridges, now! Gunshots! I'm inside. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened next? Pandemonium. There was no gunman and there were no gunshots. Yet this was the panic among shoppers at Oxford Circus as police dealt with an incident on the underground in rush hour on Black Friday. Poor Ollie just got a bit scared. It's understandable. London is so tense at the moment. If a balloon pops, you're like, fuck you, ISIS! <laughs> he was clearly trying to help, but Piers Morgan lost his shit. And what followed was the most beautiful Twitter spiral that I have ever seen. Piers Morgan started it with this. Listen, Ollie, when you have millions of followers, be very careful what you tweet. There were no shots. In fact, nothing happened at all. So you stirred extra needless panic by tweeting false information. To which James Blunt said, from the man who published fake Iraqi torture pictures. <laughs> Can it get weirder? Yes, it can. The Real Madrid midfielder, Tony Cruz, liked this, <laughs> to which Piers Morgan said, you stay out of this, Cruz, <laughs> if you know what's good for you. <laughs> then, from nowhere, ex-Liverpool player Colo Torre told Morgan to shut the fuck up, <laughs> to which Morgan said, I'd be this angry too if my younger brother was better at football than me. <laughs> Colo ended the entire conversation with, is this a comeback? I told you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> that... That is how England does Black Friday. <laughs> Sat in an armchair, arguing on Twitter. <laughs> what a headline this is. Sex toys worth one million stolen from a lorry in Northamptonshire. <laughs> Whoever stole them, one thing we know, they will not Come quietly. Now, <laughs> you wouldn't with five dildos up your ass. Now, for, <laughs> just, for some reason, this is amazing, for some reason, the police tried to find the sex toys by asking for help on Facebook. Why? What did the British public do? They took the piss. <laughs> Norman said, I assume they smashed in the driver's back doors and slipped in through the rear. <laughs> Emma. Chipped in with, the dogging crowd must have had a good night in that Levi. <laughs> and Phil went for, my mate Carla has been walking a bit funny, maybe check her out. A young carpenter from Whitby says he's been inundated with online messages telling him to go away because he happens to be called Storm Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bloke who's actually called Storm Dennis <laughs> and people have been tweeting him messages like this. Fuck off and stop knocking my bins over. <laughs> that is what makes you British! <laughs> now, Brexit's like Groundhog Day. Nothing's changed. In fact, the only thing that's changing is people in this country are getting angrier and more divided, which is a shame. 
Because when we're united, we are unstoppable. This week, the New York Times ran a story about London police being overwhelmed by crime and tweeted the question, have you experienced a petty crime in London? Click to tell us your story. And what did the great British public do? <laughs> we took the piss. <laughs> Some monster put the milk in before the tea bag. <laughs> Some... Some spoke of terror. Someone clipped me with their trolley and waitress the other day and only apologised once. <laughs> but one brave man fought back. I once told a bumblebee to fuck off. <laughs> Brexit may be tearing us apart, but our sense of humour will always bring us together. They're trying to restrain me from saying this, but I, 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 if it is correct, which I cannot believe that it really is, but if it is correct that the BBC is saying that they will not uh, sing the words of Land of Hope and Glory and Rule Britannia as they, as, as they traditionally do at the end of, of last night of, of the prompts. I think it's time we stopped our cringing embarrassment about our history. I wonder why he's talking about this. Could it be that he's using it as a distraction? Never mind Brexit, coronavirus, looming mass unemployment and record numbers using food banks. Let's argue about a song written in 1740. It's almost like the government want to keep people divided. If they're shouting at each other, they can't shout at us. That's why Jacob Rees-Mogg tweets things like this. Britons must never be enslaved by political correctness, which led to Labour MP Neil Coyle tweeting this. Royal Britannia was a song for shit lickers. If only there was footage that proved that. Some people are so desperate to get out, they're tweeting about it, but not always careful about what they tweet. Fuck this pandemic. I miss eating out my friends. <laughs> with my friends! I miss eating out with my friends! Either that or she really misunderstood this. 